Okay. So welcome to our meditation this evening. I'm filling in for Hannah Mason and I've been joining her now for several weeks and I'll do the best I can. It's not going to be exactly her because I'm not her, but uh, the Kavana is that we should join our hearts together and connect up to other people who need blessings and need light. Um, let's start by let's start by just noticing where we are and doing some mindfulness practice. And I'm sitting in a chair and notice if you are in a place that you feel safe. And I'm in my office and I have company. I have my my old dog with me. And uh, Ariella has her dog with her, so I'm not the only one who brought a dog. And let's notice the breath. Breathing in, straightening the spine, and breathing out and sending that breath down your spine and down to your feet and grounding you. Let's try that a few times. Breathing in and breathing out. Noticing if you have any kind of stiffness or sensations that are distracting you, or perhaps a noisy brain, which is not unusual. And coming back to the breath as an anchor. Breathing in. And breathing out. And we can do a body scan, just kind of noticing if there are any sensations or emotions that are coming up as we're meeting in this moment. Breathing in, breathing out, and noticing my feet on the floor. My lower legs. Just so that I'm not too stiff, my knees, upper legs. Notice if you're holding any tension in your gut and if you can, and then when you breathe in, you breathe out, kind of let tension go even a little bit. If you want, you can put your hand on your gut just to invite relaxation and holding. Are you noticing any tension in your chest, tightness, or heaviness? You can go to the back. Notice if you have any discomfort anywhere in your back, lower, middle, or upper back. Shoulders, arms, hands. If you find that your if you find that your mind is is drifting into thoughts, you can just label it thinking and just kind of take those thoughts and set those aside and say, it's okay, we'll be back, we'll think about these things later and come back to the practice. I'm going to mute and the participants, if you want to say something, you can unmute yourselves. Notice your neck. 
your throat. Sometimes when we have big emotions, they get caught in our throat. Your face. Don't forget the jaw. And the head. Let's go back to the breath. And let's set an intention for this practice for today. I looked at the Parsha coming up. And in Rishon, it talks about, Torah talks about um, the bracha that Yaakov has from Hashem. The Ata Amarta, Imcha. I will surely do good for you. And Rashi says that the two words are doing good is intended to, to signify Haiti doing good on account of your own merits, but also Haiti do good on account of your father's merits from gracious Rava. So let's let's think about blessings and use your imagination, as Hannah would say. To think of the time when you received a blessing from someone, and it may have been somebody who was a very holy person, or it may have been a parent, or it may have been a stranger, it doesn't matter. Let's focus on the story behind that blessing. And just breathe and notice the story of how it came about, and where you were. And did you request that blessing or did it come kind of unexpected, unannounced? And as you think about that blessing and how it was given to you, how many years ago, maybe it was recent, or maybe it was a long time ago. Maybe it was a blessing that was given to a, an ancestor. Notice any emotions that come forward as you're reflecting on that blessing and the being that gave you that blessing. Maybe it came directly from a close blessing. And notice an emotion that comes up as you reflect on that blessing and the part that that blessing has played in opening up opening up your awareness and opening up positive opportunities or anything that blessings do. And I'm noticing gratitude for the bracha that I received that I have in mind. Maybe I can describe the bracha that I got many, many years ago. Actually, I was 28 or 29. I'm now 69. So over 40 years ago, or about 40 years ago, I wrote to the Baba Rebbe and asked him for a bracha to go back to college and study as a psychotherapist. And I wrote a proposal explaining why and what my intention was. And the Rebbe, within a week, had his secretary send back instructions. The Rebbe came with instructions. 
I was to have my husband's agreement, his Haskama. I was to follow Halakha and be in consultation with a Rav who specialized in medical ethics related to psychology. And everything, my learning and my practice had to be in a way of zeus, of modesty. And if I would follow those instructions that I got 40 years ago, I had a bracha. And the instructions still apply. And the bracha has very, very gradually revealed itself to the point where now the bracha is fully revealed. So sometimes the bracha is a simple thing. Sometimes it's a lifetime of stories. So let's notice whatever emotion or sensation comes up as you reflect on the bracha that you receive. And let's shift gears and let's reflect on a bracha that you might want to give to someone else. Let's start with an individual that you want to bless. And then after that, then we can join forces together and we can take this bracha from the Parsha and ask Kodesh Baruch Hu to reveal the good and the merit of our present generation and the merit of the fathers and the mothers from all the previous generations. So let's do a personal bracha for someone who you know needs one. And just breathing and opening up. And if you're noticing any stiffness or any busy brain, just be curious and compassionate toward that. And ask those parts to just kind of let you focus on who you would like to give this bracha to, what your kavana, what your intention is. And there may be lots of people you want to focus on it may be hard to find one person. But as we're breathing and noticing our sensations in our breath, let's send a bracha with intention to one person who really, really could use it. And from your heart, draw down kindness and compassion for that person. Whether you know them very well or maybe you don't know them very well, but this is one person who struggles. And maybe they don't know where to start because they're stuck. And that's what a bracha does. It takes us out of the stuck. And I'm sending a bracha to someone I care about. May that person be healthy. May that person be at peace. Person overcome that demon inside them that draws them out of the positive side and find their neshama and their light. And we can add to that as we breathe in and out, we can use the mantra shalom, peace, 
also the name of Hashem. Shalom. Shalom. Visualize the letters of the shin, the lamed, the bar, the man. As you send that word and that intention to that person who needs a bracha. When you're ready, we can shift gears. And envision while you throw, who are all in a state of shock. about returning to biblical levels of persecution. Particularly the communities in the South, the Mantis Row, and the communities all over Mantis Row, the North, the Center, just feel that Shalom. And the Pasuk from the Chumash, Vyata Amarta, you said, I will give you goodness. I will do good for you. On account of your own merits, and I wish to you know. That Claudia Stroll has merits, lots of lots of merits. No matter what clothing people wear or what customs they keep. Somebody who might look like the farthest from goodness might be the one who's the closest to goodness. I was just reading a story written down by Elie Wiesel about Reb Baruch of Mezebush. He was a difficult personality. He had anger and irritability. And when everyone else in the yeshiva was studying, according to the story, he was playing games. And his colleagues were shocked. What is this? And the Magad and his rich said, the Rebbe, he said, we don't know who he is and what he what he's doing with his games. His games are higher than any of your learning. Kind of hard to understand sometimes especially when someone is irritable. In fact, there's another story that Reb Baruch was arguing with his household and somebody watching and they were shocked. And Reb Baruch turned to them and he said, that argument is from exile and that argument is about rectifying the exile. So let's have a kavana. And even if there are arguments and disagreements, and even what looks like darkness, that we will like revelating it's a compared of who was a contemporary of Reb Baruch of Mezabush, that we will look at the good side of our brothers and sisters and send them brachas. May you be safe. 
May you be healthy. May you have shalom. May we all be reunited with the exiles who are being kept hostage. hostage. And the exiles inside ourselves, which we are holding hostage, that keep us from fully realizing our capacity that all of us should be redeemed from our exile. In the merit of our present generation, in the merit of the fathers and the mothers, our grandmothers, our grandfathers, our great-grandmothers, our great-grandfathers, and all the way back to Abraham, Yitzchak, and Yaakov. And let's continue to visualize the blessing, the bracha that we're sending to Klau Yisrael in general and those who are suffering, particularly those who are confined and imprisoned. Noticing your breath, and as you exhale, sending compassion and brachas. Breathing in, taking in that kindness of a Kodesh Baruch Hu, overseeing our, brach, our, our, our breath, and then breathing out and sending that kindness and compassion to Claudius Raul. And let's stay with that for a few minutes. Focusing if your mind is busy with thoughts, you can invite the thoughts, the thinking part to relax. Maybe take a look at that mountain or look out the window to give it somewhere else to look at or somewhere else to go. If you notice a pain or a tightness anywhere, if you can ask the pain or tightness to relax, for Hashem's kindness to release you from that pain. And if it doesn't go away, that's also just noticing. And if you're noticing any other emotions that are coming up, Whether positive or negative, welcome those emotions and invite them to participate in this bracha that we're sending. Sending light and shalom and safety. And Hashem blessed us in this parsha on Yom Rishon. And Hashem continues to bless us. We're going to stop in a few minutes. Going out of the practice, you can notice your body is sitting in the chair or standing up or laying down. And when you're ready, you can open your eyes and reorient back into the room or the outside space that you're in.
Notice where you are. And if you want to turn your camera on or say something, you're welcome to. And if you're not feeling like that, that's also okay.